good morning. Thank you for being up early. Or for me, I'm early. It's an, I'm an engineer, so I like to stay up late. But um, I hopefully I have a really joyful and wonderful presentation I would love to share with you today. So here I am. Uh, so I'm Lamore Freed. I go by Lady Ada. That's my handle for 15 years now. And I'm an engineer. I'm an electrical engineer in particular. And this is me wearing my EFF shirt. And um, this is my company. Uh, it's my company, Adafruit. And uh, we're actually here in New York, which was really nice because uh, we just had to go up only 20 blocks to get here. And uh, this is uh, my team. So we are in Soho, in uh, Varick and um, Spring Street, kind of. And uh, we manufacture open source electronics, so hardware, but we also have firmware and software that goes along with it. And what's really kind of interesting and weird is we actually do the manufacturing in-house. So um, behind all these wonderful people, you can kind of see some like tubes and stuff. So those are the tubes that go to our manufacturing equipment. So we actually purchased uh, pick in places and reflow ovens and all the things that make the electronics you know and love, uh, we have them in our factory. And we have about 100 people. Uh, it's a woman owned, me, uh, 100%. Um, <laughs> nobody else will take it from me. I keep saying, take this company from me. But uh, no, it's, it's my, my fault, my problem. Um, it's profitable. We um, don't have loans or VCs or investment or anything. So that means we have a lot of freedom to do what we want to do and celebrate the people we want to celebrate and the projects we want to celebrate. Uh, here are the two people who operate the machines. People just love looking at the pictures of the machines, so um, I like to bring these up. You can see um, on the left is a stenciler, and then we have two pick in places. They pick up the components and place them onto circuit boards. And then the thing that says caution high temperature is the reflow oven. It's kind of like the um, bagel toaster in the deli, where you put the bagel in, it goes and then it like falls down. It's exactly like that, but it's um, 270 degrees centigrade, and it melts metal. And um, <laughs> it doesn't taste very good on top of um, your poppy seed bagel. But in front is uh, Michelle. Uh, who really uh, is a huge fan of the Golden Girls, and Vance, uh, who loves uh, Captain America and Superman, and they are running the pick and place. They're holding the feeders, which kind of look like, like cyber weapons or something. But um, they look really serious, but actually they're, they're wonderful people. And these are, these are the people who run the equipment. And what's cool is because I'm right there, like 20 feet away from the equipment, I get to do really fast iteration and um, fast design and, and electronics. Um, like, you know, I, I have something in my brain, and I'm like, okay, I have to get this thing in my brain, and then I'll design it in CAD software, and then I just bring it over to the machine and we make it immediately. Um, but enough about me. What I'm here to talk about is uh, a thing that I do uh, every week, which is I have a show and tell, and this is part of our community outreach. So what I like to do is you know, make electronics, but I also like to see what people are doing with these electronics. And I think that, you know, a lot of us here are probably engineers, or we write software, or we do graphics, and you're kind of in your head a lot, right? You're in your room, and sometimes you're in front of your computer, and you're typing, you're typing, you're typing, and there's an error, and you fix the error, and then you type and you type, and there's more errors, and then you kind of just do that, like a lot. <laughs> and you end up getting really wrapped up in what it is you're doing, but you don't always get to see what happens after it leaves your world, after it's uploaded to you know, PyPy, or after you've uh, shipped the hardware to someone, or after you've put that video on YouTube. How does it inspire people? What do people do with that information? And what's cool about uh, the show and tell, the project, um, the, the show that I'm gonna talk about, is we every week invite people from the community back in and say, show us your project. What are you working on? What are you doing? It doesn't have to use our hardware or our software or firmware. We're just, we just want to know what you're, what you're up to. And um, it's a joyful, exciting, and surprising experience. So this is uh, the show. We broadcast it. Right now, we use um, Google Hangouts. When Google Hangouts goes away, we'll use something else. We, we've con continuously iterated. It's funny, because it's true. Uh, it's, we've iterated. <laughs> And, um, and, and modified and, and just and had fun. And I've been doing it for eight years, so you're, you're going to see a wide range of, um, well, I'm always going to have pink hair, but um, I look sometimes a little skinnier. And, uh, and this is it's just really neat, because every week I get to have about six to 10 people who show up from around the world, different backgrounds, different experiences, bringing 
their communities and their backgrounds and what they do into my world, and I'm better for it. So this is um, Sally, and Sally is a quilter, and um, she really likes making textile art, and she's uh, expanded her textile art into now adding electronics. wonderful. Um, and here is her, uh, she, she comes by the show and tell and, and updates us on her latest project. So this is her showing up um, a couple weeks ago. Hey. Yeah, I finished this skirt. Um, I'm going to have to stand on this chair again. See if you can see it. Oh, cool. Oh, neat. Resist skirt. Yep, resist. And the cut. The red and green go from one direction and the blue goes in the other, so they cross. Um, oh, oh, neat. Yeah, it's going around. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, it goes clockwise, I guess. Um, and I'm going to add another color because I end up with the front of the skirt unlit altogether in long periods of time. But that's basically it. And, it... and what's neat about having people come in with, like you can tell by looking at her, uh, you know, the, the dresses and coats and skirts she made, she's incredibly technically skilled in creating beautiful 3D textile art and beading. And she has inspired so many people in our community to do more wearables. So we actually see a lot of people doing wearable electronics. Um, this is a project from about a year ago. Um, this is actually only down the street. This is um, Zach Posen, who designs like like fashion, fashion, and um, uh, but you know here's something really neat. So he was actually uh, teamed up with Maddie Maxi, and she designed electronics that went to this beautiful LED gown. And when he did his fashion show, I think it was like winter 2015, um, they had girls from the New York City schools design the code that went into this dress. So I'll have I'll have Maddie talk about it. I think it will be so exciting to see the girls who've made the animations that are on the dress see what they've done in this beautiful spotlight. Like your heart and soul goes into these kind of projects and it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of troubleshooting and it's wonderful when everyone can stand around and see you know, the fruit of their labor. It was so great to see like our designs on the dress and see how like what we did online could just translate to real life so well. One of the things that I like about the, especially the wearable technology is, you know, New York City has so many people who are fashion designers or work in textiles, and a lot of them don't necessarily think that technology is something that they would integrate into their designs, um, but this was a perfect mesh of showing code, electronics, soldering, uh, how to uh, stitch conductive thread into a dress, and then write the code that runs on the dress, manages the battery power. Uh, so, as you know, we're seeing wearables come in from uh, you know, tech companies, but we're also seeing like this textile and, and cosplay art coming from the community. Um, this is my friend Star, so we went to school together at MIT, and um, she's one of the most uh, creative and awesome people I know, and she loves analog electronics uh, almost as much as I do. No, she, she loves it more than I do. And she, um, she was really inspired by these notebooks called uh, the, the Mini Electronics Notebooks, I think. They used to be sold in Radio Shack, and they were written by a person named Forrest Mims. And she loved these circuits because it's how she learned to become an engineer. So uh, a couple months ago, she decided, oh, I'm going to give homage to these circuits that I learned from that were like designed in like the 70s or the 80s by taking these circuits and turning them into little kits. But instead of just making the kits, she actually like took 
the hand-drawn circuits from the notebooks and like transfer them into the circuit. And like, it takes months actually to get it to look quite right because you have to work within the technology of making PCBs. And so you can see her holding them up. And then on the left, um, these beautifully, she got a custom Pantone color of the circuit board uh, to match the book. And um, you can kind of barely see it, but beneath um, the, uh, the hand-drawn circuit, which is on the right, you can see these faint lines. She used the copper as a relief to make it look like a line notebook. I mean, she just like, she just, like went all out on this. And um, here's a video of her uh, showing it off just as she had finished the project. Yeah, shop, shop, shop. Yeah, it's, well, it's done. Yeah, if you're around there. Yeah. So here's one now. Um, this circuit is called the uh, dual LED flasher, um, and it's one of the like most fun projects that I think a lot of people do sort of very, very early on. It's got two transistors, two capacitors, four resistors, and two LEDs. So that makes it like a, you know very uh, fast to put together um, and get results from. And this so, is a schematic, so you have this drawn out here. You have the schematic drawn out, and that's actually uh, taken from the book. So you can see that that's like a, a vector yeah. of the actual page in the this book. This is handwriting. Well, oh, this is it's, it's handwriting. It's on, uh, yeah, it should be on page 113. Okay, hold on. Well, this, is, this is comparing and contrasting. So, just, so I actually had the book in front of me, and we were like comparing and contrasting. And, um, I have another friend of mine, uh, Amanda, who uh, she's wearing a diode costume. Um, and she, uh, she went to school with me, and we, we met in chemistry class, and we, we hit it off. And she shows up on the show and tells. Uh, she's been one of the first guests, actually. So this is jamming out. This is the video audio sync part. Yeah. One can say that this boat isn't rocking. It's oscillating. But what's its fundamental frequency? Boss, what you doing? Oh, hi, Adabot. I was just adding some protection to this circuit. Interesting. Why does this circuit need protection? Well, a circuit needs to be protected for a couple of reasons. One example is if I were to connect a battery to this incorrectly, then electrical current might flow in the wrong direction and damage some of the components. Oh, no. How do you make sure that doesn't happen? You use a diode. Um, so she has this really awesome diode flapper costume. So um, what's really neat is because I've had so many of my friends from MIT show up, we actually had um, a parent who watched these shows with his daughter. And a couple years ago, he emailed us, and he said that his daughter asked, do boys do engineering too, or only girls? Because there's only girls on your show. Um, and, and to this day, you know, when I go to events like Maker Fairs, I get to meet parents um, and their kids. And these kids have not lived in a world where they haven't seen lots of really cool women um, doing electronics on this video show that they watch. So this is, um, this is our puppet show, which you can watch on YouTube. It's called um, uh, 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 Circuit, sorry, Circuit Playground. And this is Adabot, who is sort of like our uh, proxy for the, you know, the Elmo, the, the young child who's curious about uh, what goes inside of a robot, you know, Adabot's a robot, but doesn't understand what that means. And so um, Adabot gets to ask questions like, what's a battery and what's a motor? I'm made out of a motor, but what is it? So, uh, you know, we get to answer those questions and, and at the same time uh, teach and educate. Um, and what's neat is uh, we've been doing this for so long that, you know, we've been doing it for eight years, which, which for me doesn't seem like very long, but uh, in the community is, is such a long time that we've actually gotten to see uh, people join the show and tell, show off their projects in high school, um, apply to college, you know, become engineers, and then come back after they've graduated. This is a, um, someone who uh, came on our show pretty early. Hey guys, so, uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, online there is this, all transistor clock that I saw a little while back. And yeah. uh, actually, I, I decided I wanted to build a 4017, you know, it's a decade counter chip. I wanted to try building it with transistors. So I made this about a year ago on a breadboard, and I never had the heart to take it apart. So I'm wanting to show it to you for a while. So, okay. Wow. Oh, cool. That is, that's intense. So, wait, there's multiple decade counters, or that's. So it's one decade counter. There's a, it's actually being driven by a 555 at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. We can go really quick. For, for extra second. transistory joy, you could use like a, a, a basic relaxation oscillator, so you don't even have a chip in there. Yeah, it's actually, well, I built uh, an e-stable multivibrator for a second version. So that was, that's on a breadboard, and it's a bit unstable. Mm -hmm. 
I work actually as a technician at my school, so we have facilities to etch boards. So it's a, it's a double sided. Cool. And uh, I have to register the, the two sides up. Yeah, it was actually it was a big pain, and I. There we go. Okay. All right. So now you are you, okay for like six months from now. You can come back with an ALU. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. for sure. Where are you uh, where are you applying? Uh, well, MIT actually. Oh great. Well, yeah. you should uh, okay. so, 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 mail in the decade counter. So, so. Um, so it's really neat, and I like that we have a place where. You know, I, you know, she built this project a year ago, and she kind of had to get a little bit of courage to show it. But if you have a community that has a lot of different people showing projects of all sorts of different complexity, I mean, her project is like more hardcore than something even I would build. But we have people who come in who are like, um, you can sort of see at the bottom, there are these two kids, and um, they built like a, a LED throwing, they put it in an Easter egg. So they built something that would be considered a very beginner project, but they were so proud of it, you know, because they were only like four or five years old. Um, giving people those positive experiences in a place that's safe to share their projects, even if they're you know, very simple, or maybe they even make mistakes, or maybe it doesn't even work out. Actually, you know, sometimes people show off their live, because these are live demos, which is, of course, terrifying. Um, when people show off their demos, sometimes it doesn't work, and like once in a while, like it blows up, just because like it's a live demo. Uh, so we have a special badge um, called Smokey the Blue Smoke Monster, and it, <laughs> and so we'll mail them like this cool like badge that they can sew onto their jacket as a reward for like congratulations, you um you got the blue smoke out of your project, and so even even something that might have been considered an embarrassment or failure is a success. So that's kind of it's always good figure out ways to like reward people even if something doesn't work out. We're here. Oh, sorry. Um, and um, so next up is um, a friend of uh, Ada Fruits, Micah. And uh, Micah is in the West Coast. And what's really cool about Micah is uh, she's like the most hardcore engineer I've ever met in my entire life. Um, but she really loves beautiful LED art. And she's figured out, like, how can I use my incredible technological skills to help other artists make LED art? So here's her, and um, we had her over while we uh, designed, she designed the circuit board to help artists, it's called um, uh, Fade Candy. Uh, she has really cool names for her projects, and so we built it on the machines, and we had her over, uh, she visited New York, because she wanted to see how you program a board on these pick and place machines that you just saw. We're here at the Adafruit factory in Soho, and with me is Micah, also known as Scanlime, who's designed the awesome Fade Candy board in high demand, very popular board, tell me about it. Um, so it kind of is, it's an LED controller. It's uh, something that came out of a bunch of art projects I did with the, um, the NeoPixel WS 2011 LEDs. I kind of stumbled upon a way to make them uh, look a little bit better using uh, some new algorithms that give them better color quality, but it was really difficult to use. So this kind of turned into a project where I wanted to take that same quality and kind of make it more accessible to people, to make it easy for people to make art projects that um, just had a lot more room for creativity and less just kind of blinky on off all the time. Like, there was actually an art exhibit uh, near Adafruit that was this gigantic ball, and you would like go in it, and there was these lights, and they were flashing and moving, and there was a sound. It was just really cool, and it was like your heartbeat or something. Um, it was this really awesome interactive art exhibit, and then um, I happened to walk by one day while the person was uh, setting it up, and I asked them, oh, what were you using to control these lights? And they said, oh, we're using this like eight boards called like a fade candy. So, <laughs> so it was really neat, because it was like art making art making art. You know, it's like, uh, it's like the more beautiful version of a Y Combinator. Um, so we, put, we put the recursion in the LEDs. Um, so, uh, you know, Mike has gone on to make even more fun projects, but I, like, 
To this day, almost any LED art you'll see at Burning Man or at a museum or an exhibit or like a music show, almost all of it runs on Fade Candy, which is this open source hardware and software that she designed. And this is exactly what she wanted. And you can see how happy she is. She's like so excited to see her art in the world, making more art that she then goes and enjoys. Um, and uh, here's actually, this one doesn't use um, uh, Fade Candy, but it's the same kind of a addressable LED. And this is cool because it's like science. Hi, guys. Um, OK, so actually, I'm going to move this around. So let me stand up so you guys can get a better picture of what this looks like. Can Whoa. You see that? Yeah. OK, right. So um, this is a project I've been working on for like, about a year now it's been going through like different prototypes and it's gotten to this point um, so basically the point of this is all to kind of help kids get engaged in learning about their bodies and then this in particular is them learning about anatomy and physiology so what I have right here is um, Oh my god, you can see how fast my heart's beating right there because I'm so excited. Okay. Yeah, that's so cool. excited about this. It's working, right? So it is, yeah, it's actually working. And this is the first like live demo that I've done with it. So I actually have it hooked up onto a um it's something called a Zephyr Bioharness. And it actually it picks up like your heart rate and your breathing rate, and then it displays all that information on the shirt here. So there's a couple different functionalities. That's kind of the live um, viewing of what's going on inside your body. And um, I've kind of given it this layering system as well, where you can just kind of take stuff off. Wow! Like that. You can see I've got like labels on it as well. Wow, that's so cool. So you can take I've got to take my lungs off. I can what, take what my are the heart. You're using? Is that I'm using magnets. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm using magnets. And actually, I was watching the um, Becky show this afternoon, and she was talking about magnets. I was like, oh, my God, yeah, I have magnets, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I got magnets there. And then um, so I've got this other little nifty thing going on here. So um, I also wanted the kids to kind of see how the food's moving through their body. So I've got this little... Snack time button right there. Right, you right, see let's, that? Let's look it up. So we click snack time, and then <laughs> you can see oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, the okay, food going go. down, and then all of these organs kind of light up to indicate that you know there's stuff happening there. And the food goes travels down there through your small intestine and back up through the large intestine. All right. And actually, I think the liver comes off too. Yeah, the liver comes off as well. So, a lot of different funky stuff going on there. Okay, you can, you can be like, I poop blowing rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I basically have been waiting for like forever to show this off because I've been working for so long with it. Uh, so it's kind of neat to see, you know, she's she's clearly, you know, she does some electrical engineering and some making, but she also is, uh, you know, a teacher, an educator, someone who's interested in uh, biology. So um, one of my favorite things is when we get people from other disciplines, other sciences coming in and saying, um, wow, you made this electronic stuff so easy that like even the biologist can use it. Um, this is, um, this one's kind of interesting. So this is Naomi. And Naomi uh, lives in uh, Shenzhen, China. And what's really uh, interesting about the kind of making she does is she's actually, she lives in the factory of the world. Like everything in your pocket was made in Shenzhen, right? Um, that's where you know, Foxconn is, that's where um, Dell makes their stuff, that's where like, the, you know, the HQB markets, that's where all the factories, all the components are sourced. It's an amazing, wonderful place. Um, but it's, despite that, there's a lot of making going on, but it's sometimes difficult for makers in China to get their projects out. I mean, you just need to be like very technologically skilled because you may not be able to use, use YouTube or you may not be able to use Facebook. So she has to figure out ways uh, to get around, um, you know, the, the kind of poor internet access that she might have. Um, but she likes to go around the markets and, you know, she finds uh, the parts and components that are used for making, you know, cell phones and GPSs. Um, and she makes her own tools and then kind of shares them back with the community. So it's neat to see um, a maker from the place where things are made. And this is a time lapse of her making a really cool infinity mirror dress. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, and what's neat is, you know, she, she's got it made. Like, she literally goes down the street and can buy components at, like, the local corner store. So I'm a little, I'm a little jealous. But I think what we're going to see is more and more of these makers. I mean, like, Shenzhen is, like, the epicenter of of electronics, just like New York used to be like the epicenter of fashion. So I think we're going to see a lot more makers uh, from China, uh, people who do this for work, or people who are learning electronics and then um, starting to share more and more. So hopefully we'll see more of that. Um, this is another a neat example of someone from a different uh, uh, engineering background using electronics uh, to make their job easier. So I thought this was cool. So um, I'm a structural engineer. and. Um... A lot of my projects lately have had mass concrete, and we have to measure the temperature of the concrete to make sure that it doesn't crack mm -hmm. if it's in mass elements. Um, so I'm working for a lot of LRT projects right now, and I had to do mock-ups, and it was very, very redundant, and it was very, very costly to the site teams. And yeah, so we tried to make a wireless instead of just connecting all these wires into the slab and measuring the temperatures. So now we're trying to wirelessly relay the information to the site teams so they can immediately know what the temperatures of the slabs are instead of them having to plug in and do the readings. Mm. All right, so we'll show you what we made. There's a, there's a transmitter, goes in this box, a little waterproof box, and inside of it, there's a, a Feather Laura, uh, 2200 milliamp battery, we got a little button over here and a switch over here. And basically, this guy is wired up to uh, thermistors on pieces of Cat5. So the end of this is a little thermistor. There's another little thermistor here to get the ambient temperature. This guy here would go in a concrete slab. And every 10 minutes, it sends out the temperature from, in this case, three different thermistors hooked up to this transmitter. Um, and there'd be multiple of these little transmitter boxes on the construction site. These are huge construction sites for subway stations and things like that. And then they all transmit to this box. There's one of these guys in the construction trailer. And this guy here is another Feather Laura. And it's also hooked up to uh, a Fona 800. So it gets all the uh, temperature settings, uh, readings from uh, the transmitter. And then it uploads it to the internet. It goes into uh, a little Google Doc that looks something like this. And we get all the temperatures there. We get the battery power there. So you know, everything's running smoothly. We get the, the decibel between the transmitter and the uh, Receivers, so we know the signal strength is good, and basically the engineers can check in throughout the day to make sure that the temperatures on the slabs are within limits instead of someone going and hooking in a computer all day long trying to get reading. So it saves everyone a lot of time and gets some better information. We made it all the stuff that we heard from you guys. That's awesome. Cool. So, um, so this is Erin. Um, so she's really neat. Okay, so she's a cosplayer, and she actually also does um, like princess shows. Uh, so she like you know when you want to have like a like somebody show up as Elsa at a, at a birthday party, She'll, she does that. Um, and uh, she also does events and stuff. And she joined a cosplay group and they have to be like barbarians. And um, it's, like a, it's like a Viking cosplay group. And like, I don't know how, like you have so much time that you can not only cosplay, but you have like themed cosplay. So um, this is uh, her group and she um, wanted to make a really cool like cyber rune wayfinder. Uh, it just looked really cool. So I, I decided to put it in because it's such a neat video. is how you can see um, the same electronics that are used by a structural engineer to like determine whether an underground subway station temperature is going to be sufficient to cure the concrete is the same electronics that someone uses to make an LED rune finder for their 
barbarian cosplay group. Uh, so that, this, is like the, this is like the wide range of experiences um, that you see, but it's the same skills and the same technology. It's just people have different needs and, and different backgrounds and different communities that they're using it in. Um, this is Morgan. Uh, I think she recently graduated, and um, she really likes yo-yos, and so uh, she made an LED yo-yo. And um, oh, quick project here. It's just a 3D print. Um, I made I it. Saw this on you tweeted or something recently. It was yeah. 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 I didn't want it. Okay. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just a circuit playground, um, actually two of them, and then I created these cases for it, and it's the yo-yo. Um, so it's a really easy print, just two prints, um, a left and a right, and they just have oh, embedded hardware. Hold it up a little bit. Yeah, can you hold it? Okay. Yeah, there you um, go. Yep, and so you can just press in the hardware while it's warm. Um, it works. Uh, I'm not very good at yo-yoing, but hey, it's worth a shot. Um, and then I figure there's all sorts of cool programming things you could do with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use the accelerometer. You could do stuff with music, with tones. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I was planning to use a different camera, but that didn't seem to come through. So uh, we'll see if I can. OK. But oh, uh, yay! Yeah, it works. I love yo-yos as a kid. I, think totally, I don't know why I collected yo-yos, but yeah, like, me too. everybody did. Uh, after she finished this project, she actually ended up documenting the project and putting it online. And so we actually had a whole bunch of kids who were into yo-yos. Like yo-yos, um, like they literally yo-yo like every 10 years. Uh, kids get really into yo-yos. Um, and what, what I think is neat is, so you see like, you know, there's like cosplay and like science and like biology, but there's people who um, have like, they have uh, hobbies or projects or things that they like to do, like they like to cosplay, for example, or they like to uh, build toys, like to skateboard. And one of the ways that I found is best to get more people in the community and reach more people outside um, just all uh, you lovely nerds is to um, kind of have projects that are more fun for people who already do something like that. Like if you're already skateboarding, you're more likely to do a skateboarding electronics project, and that might be the way you learn to code or you learn to solder, than trying to um, go down to the skate park and just like yell at people and say, learn Ohm's Law, like you'll really enjoy it. Because like they probably won't. <laughs> So that's, that's kind of why we do this. Like, there is an underlying like, uh, pedagogical reason. I think this is a, it's a good way to um, reach a wide community. Um, so we also see a lot of parents show up. Again, uh, you've been doing this eight years. Sometimes you have to watch these kids grow up and um, later on like attend college. Uh, but this is uh, Gavin. He made a really cool science fair project uh, with his dad. Gavin. Gavin, hey, Gavin. Hey, Gavin. Yes, it is. Uh, we worked on a project about a year and a half ago. We still have to go. We had an octopus project that we have in the school. Uh, so what happens is we wrote a report on the course of science board with some pictures of the And the electronics come in, the data field, we created a box for his, um, this is this is the jar. It's a plastic oh. jar with an octopus in it. No, there's a real octopus in there. Yeah, <laughs> have a motor attached with some fishing line and soap to it. We created a box with, um, we can turn it on. We created a box and it has a voice recorded. I'll turn it off right now. Now, that, that was before the FX box. This one, we really have to have the, the tiny trinket. We have to create two circuits, one to record and one to play. Yeah. So that's what that was the old style. But we also that's cool. So when you when you press the button, the, because you can't be there at the science fair all the time, so that it does the voice and it says what and it's, it's about. It's super blinky, so people know to come over. Yeah, and the and press this in this, and then and you know, press the while. You know, actually, there's a sound on the front when someone comes out. Uh, this is like a museum display. Yeah, this display yeah. itself requires its own science exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we have three buttons here. One is the message, his recorded voice. The other is the button. We press this button, and the octopus will go. Oh, okay. The octopus will go up and down. The octopus will go up and down inside the jar with the water. The battery's kind of weak right now. This is going to be the first time we've had an octopus on the show. We've had cats, dogs, lizards, and that. Yeah, that's attached to a motor controller that goes up and down. The battery's a little weak right now. 
What the heck? So how did this do at the science fair? Oh, well, great. It was, uh, it was classroom, and uh, we had it around the classroom for a while. For at least the, the entire semester, and we loved it. <laughs> All right. All right. So very cool, Gavin. Are you going to do some more electronics? Yeah. Um, and then um, we're almost all wrapping up. Uh, this was actually a neat project. So this was um, uh, one of the first times I actually saw electronics that we built at Adafruit be widely distributed. So this was uh, a project called SafeCast, which, um, well, they'll explain in the video, but it's um, a, radiation, a distributed radiation detection system uh, for uh, people living outside of Fukushima, Japan. <laughs> So the three of us are just talking, where can we find information? Oh, we can't find radiation data anywhere. And it's not because it's not being published, it's because it doesn't exist. Nobody was paying attention to this stuff. And so that's when we decided that we could start pooling our resources to get equipment, get equipment in people's hands, and go collect some of this data and publish it so that there would at least be something available. We were looking online and we couldn't get any Geiger counters. Literally within 24 hours, the whole world supply was uh, sold out. When we realized that we couldn't get the equipment, we decided that the only way to get this done is let's go and build it ourselves. After a couple of months, we realized that it would be much better for volunteers to have something that would be very concise and compact. As we redeveloped the whole system and we were able to use Arduinos and open hardware to fit it into a bento box. And that's how we came up with the bento Geiger system. Once we built one, we taught other people to build many more of them. And that really allowed us to scale up dramatically. Uh, so this is really neat because it's like citizen science, and um, I think we're going to need a lot of that uh, these days. So um, uh, one video I didn't include, but um, you, if you remember like the Volkswagen like Dieselgate uh, thing, it, you know, we, I don't know any of the people who uh, were at the universities that worked on that, but um, like a year later, I saw like, you know, one of the big articles, and they had a picture of one of their sensor boards and included one of our uh, barometric pressure and temperature sensors. So it's kind of neat. Like, the people who are working on um, these large citizen science projects, they need access to sensors and technology. And, you know, I might make a, a sensor board, and I'm like, oh, it might be useful for people who want to, like, take the temperature outside. But it turns out it's also really good for calibrating your radiation sensor or, or uh, determining if a multi-billion dollar company is lying to you. Um, and uh, last up, we're, we're going to, um, this is my uh, last joyful example. So this is uh, Chris Young, uh, C C Cyborg 5. And uh, he actually shows up on the show and tell a lot. And what's really neat is that uh, he's really active in the assistive tech community. And he designs hardware for himself and for others. And he's like a, like a really amazing programmer who also understands the needs of the people in his community. And so he designs like really amazing hardware that interacts and interfaces with um, you know, it, it, portable technology. Like he, had, like he uses an iPhone, and he uses um, some of our Bluetooth modules uh, with some custom hardware that he can use to interface um, and you know, write code, join our Hangouts, control cameras, uh, move around and stuff, and this is his uh, 60th birthday, uh, he said nobody expected him to uh, last to 60, but he's, he's going strong. This was a couple of years ago as well. And uh, this is um, a video that he, uh, this is around Christmas, so only a few months ago. This Hangouts live on air. What is this, Lady Ada? Wow, well, we're live on air here at the Adafruit factory. It's me and Lady Ada here at Adafruit in downtown Manhattan, where we do all of the design, engineering, manufacturing, testing, shipping, the tutorials, the videos, the projects, the stuff that you love from Adafruit, it's all coming to you from here in the factory, and that's where we are. Me, Lady Ada, and of course, Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. But tonight is your time to shine. It's show and tell, which we do every week at 7.30 p.m. You will show off your project to us. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. Hey! Greetings from room 207 of St. Vincent Specialty Hospital in Indianapolis. I uh, want to tell you about our, our little adventure. I had to be rushed to the emergency room on December the 12th for some respiratory problems. And they had to intubate me and then they put a trach tube. And I couldn't communicate with the doctors and nurses. Most people would just write on a notepad or something, you know. But for me, I can't do that. So back on January 20th, on the show and tell, I showed up a little Bluetooth gadget that I built with eight food parts that lets me use my iPhone just by pushing a couple of buttons. 
And normally I just use it in my day to day life for playing with the phone. But when you're communicating with doctors and nurses, it's, it becomes something more than that. It becomes a real life saving tool. And so uh, I got Paul and Diana an email thanking them for making all these parts available and help to save my life. And the outpouring of support for me has just been phenomenal. I, I, I just am so touched by the response of the maker community and all the well wishes. And I believe in prayers and good wishes and good vibes and all sorts of spiritual support helps. And I've been getting a ton of it. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for the support. Uh, apparently, I'm not yet ready to meet my maker. Uh, my maker still has some plans for me. He apparently wants me to do more projects and write more tutorials and share more open source. So you're not done with me yet. I'm still going to be around, and uh, and I have a lot more to contribute. And I just want to thank everybody for all the support and say a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'm looking forward to a great new year with all of you. Um, so what's really neat is, like, as soon as he got better, he wrote, like, this 20-page guide on how he, like, built this Bluetooth device and put all the code and the schematics um, and, and, like, the methodology and, and videos on how he built it and how he uses it online. Um, and when he was in the hospital, actually, because, you know, he, he can't write um, and he was intubated so he couldn't speak, so to communicate with his caretakers, he sort of used um, this Bluetooth gadget, actually a lot like the cording keyboard that Mirabai has here, and um, he was uh, typing, communicating on the, the iPad uh, to his doctors, and the, and the doctor actually said, well, you should really patent that. You, know, you can make a lot of money, and he said, like, fuck that. I'm going to like open source it, publish it, and give it to the world uh, because that's what I do. That's who he is. And so, uh, you know, last night he sent me some uh, infrared source code. He uses a lot of infrared technology, and so do a lot of people who do assistive tech. Uh, he wrote this really cool um, library for Arduino that does infrared uh, parsing, and he did a really great job, and we're, we're working on more projects together. So I think... Um, this is a demonstration of the iOS accessibility feature known as switch control. A Bluetooth device sends key presses to an iPad or iPhone and allows disabled users to access the device without actually touching the touch screen. In this demonstration, our Bluetooth device has three switches. One advances the cursor forwards, another one selects and the other one advances the cursor backwards. A long press of any of these switches also enables a different function. So I think as, as I'm wrapping up here, I think, first off, I hope you had a lot of fun watching the joyful, exciting, and surprising things that people are making, but I also hope that, um, you know, as you're developing hardware or software or documenting or videographing or uh, you know, whatever it is that you do in your job and your passion, understand that when you bring it out into the world, people are going to use it in amazing, joyful, and wonderful ways. Um, so, like, reach out to your community and make it a safe place for them to share back with what they're doing. And um, do it often because, uh, you know, sometimes I get really, really, really frustrated with the hardware I'm working on. But then I watch these videos and I feel like it's totally worth it. <laughs>